Okay, in this video, I am gonna teach you everything you need to know about blood sugar. There are four patterns that show up when you're fasting, and I'm gonna break those patterns down so you can better understand what your numbers mean. So blood sugar, let's dive in. Okay, you guys, I am coming to you with everything you need to know about your blood sugar and ketones because oh my gosh if there is one question we are answering over and over again on youtube in the resetter group in the women's reset in my academy is how the heck do you interpret your ketones and your blood sugar while you're going through all this variation while you're going through all these different fasts and so what i wanted to do on this video was hopefully help simplify it for you and give you four typical patterns that we see after doing this with hundreds of thousands of people and what these patterns mean and what you can do about them, okay? And then I, at the end, stay tuned because at the end I wanna go through some things like the Dawn Effect, if you're not familiar with that. I wanna talk about what happens with your blood sugar and ketones when you exercise, why your ketones are lower in the morning and how stress affects it. So I wanna go through some very specific scenarios after I go through the patterns, okay? So let me start off with saying this. Normal blood sugar. So when I'm working with a patient, what I like to see is I like to see your blood sugar be in the morning and when you're fasting pretty much all the time between 80 and or between 70 and 90. So that is a good range. When you're between 70 and 90, that's great. Now, of course, if you eat a meal, it's gonna go up, but then we wanna see it come down after that. So when you get up in the morning, we wanna see that your blood sugar is between 70 and 90, okay? We also wanna see that your ketones are over, if you wanna be in ketosis, you need to be over 0.5, okay? So a lot of you are getting up in the morning and you're seeing a low ketone reading, and I know that that is, uh, freaks you out, and I wanna explain a little bit about, about that. But once you get to 0.5, you're now in nutritional ketosis. I never want to see with a patient and my resetter group, if you guys are fasting with us during fast training week, I never want to see it go over 8.0. So that is where you're getting into ketoacidosis beyond that. I mean, ketoacidosis is way beyond that, but that is, a, that is what I would consider like a scary range. You want to make sure you're being personally coached if you're in those numbers. So for starters, let's start with the basis. Normal is 70 to 90 and um, ketones 0.5 to 8.0. Now, I know people are watching this all over the world and these are the American uh, measurements. So we will put in the show notes how you translate them into, I, I think in Europe, you guys are doing millimoles for, um, for blood sugar. So we'll put the conversion for you in the show notes. Okay, so that's normal. When do, you, when do you measure? I like, when I'm working with a patient, I like to see them measure first thing in the morning and then right before their first meal. So that's like, when I start off with a patient, I wanna know that they are measuring on a regular basis first thing in the morning and right before their first meal. And what I'm looking for is I wanna see, are they waking up in those ranges that I just told you and I wanna see that at the second reading that the blood sugar is going down and the ketones are going up. So let me give you an example. And this would be, let me give you an example. I, I wanna see if you woke up at 85, your blood sugar was 85, and let's say your ketones were too low to measure, and all of a sudden you eat your first meal at noon, I would wanna see that your blood sugar went down to 83 and that your ketones, even if they went up to 0.1 or to 0.2, maybe they went up to 0.5, that would be indicative of my first pattern, which is that you are moving towards fat adaptation. So pattern number one, when you're doing these two measurements in a day, is that your, your, your blood sugar will go down and your ketones will go up. So it's on that second reading, blood sugar's down, ketones are up in comparison to the first reading, okay? That would tell me your body's trying to figure it out. It's trying to make itself fat adapted and that is the first pattern and that's honestly what we wanna see for everyone. 
with my patients as I'm coaching people or in the academy if, or in the women's reset, like if I see that's not happening and we're throwing a lot of, lot of um, keto at it, a lot of fasting, a lot of variation, then I go digging deeper. There's another reason that that pattern isn't happy, happening. Okay, so pattern number one is that your second reading, your ketones are going up and your blood sugar is going down, you're trying to get fat adapted. That's a good, healthy, normal pattern, okay? Pattern number two. Pattern number two is where you get up in the morning, you take your reading, and at that second reading, your blood sugar has gone down, but your ketones aren't changing. Your ketones aren't budging. This is the one everybody flipping hates, or one of the ones. This is the one where they're like, but I can see the blood sugar is going down. Why are my ketones not changing? So what I want you to know, if this is consistently happening to you, so if you're applying keto, if you're fasting, if you're on a water fast, if you're autophagy fasting, if you're applying these principles, if your blood sugar is doing what it's supposed to do, but those ketones are not, this is indicative of your liver is stressed. Your liver has been working really hard and you're now asking it to change to a different fuel source. So the liver is in control of making ketones. So if it's not making ketones, we need to heal the liver. This is where you would do a liver supplement. This is where a good liver cleanse would come in handy. Um, this is where coffee enemas really work miracles. So some of you just need to keep fasting and doing, and doing keto and fasting more and those ketones will start to come up and some of you are gonna have to go and start healing the liver at a deeper level, okay? So that's pattern number two. First pattern is that your body's trying to become fat adapted. Second pattern is that you've got this stressed liver and your ketones aren't budging. Okay, third pattern. Third plant pattern is where you've got a, uh, what I call a lot of stored sugar. So this is where your blood sugar is actually either staying the same or it's going up. We've seen this happen a lot where people are like, wait, wait a second, my blood sugar is going up and I haven't been eating. Why is that happening? Or my blood sugar's not, not budging, but your ketones are also going up. So that would be pattern number three. Blood sugar staying the same or going up, and the ketones are going up. Okay, so let's dive into what the body's trying to do. In that scenario, you have a lot of stored sugar. Stored sugar in the liver, stored sugar in your tissue, maybe stored sugar in your fat. Your liver's not congested, it's healthy. It knows how to make the ketones when you're fasting, and you're, but you're, you've got so much stored sugar that the body is still dumping sugar into your bloodstream. So that is scenario number three, where you have stored sugar. The trick for this, keep fasting, keep fasting, keep fasting, keep doing keto, keep varying it, that is going to even out, okay? In the pattern before this, pattern number two, where the ketones aren't budging, we gotta help the liver out. In this one, it's just time and repetition, okay? The fourth pattern, this is the one probably the most frustrating. You're fasting, you're doing keto, you're doing everything, but your blood sugar is not budging, it may even be going up, and your ketones, you can't get into ketosis. You're not budging in ketosis. This is your classic toxic bucket. You have too many toxins in your body. And toxins, what they do is they start to block receptor sites. So you're completely insulin uh, resistant, your liver is struggling, you got a lot of stored sugar, the body is confused, it's mixed up, the mitochondria are probably holding on to a lot of toxins, so you gotta go digging for toxicity. This is where you get a heavy metal test, you get a mold test, this is where you wanna jump into our group detox or do a detox, like you need to think toxicity if you're fasting and doing keto and doing all the variation I teach here on my channel and you're not, those numbers are not budging, we got a toxic issue, okay? So those are the four patterns that we see the most. The first is where on that second reading that your blood sugar is going down, ketones are going up. Yay, we love that, that's fat adapted. Second one is your blood sugar is going down but your ketones aren't changing. That's where we need to love on the liver a little more. Third one is that the blood sugar is going up and the ketones are going up. That's all that stored sugar from years ago. It's still a good sign. We wanna get it out, get that junk out. Uh, keep fasting, you'll, you, you'll, you'll, your numbers will switch. And then the fourth one is where nothing's budging. 
Okay, so that's toxicity. Okay, now let's dive into what are some special scenarios that I want you to think about. So one of them is called the Dawn Effect. So again, I want you to crawl back into your body. Let's think about your body and what your body does. So at night is the longest period you usually go. Well, those of us that fast go a little bit longer, but you're going without food and your brain is still working. So the brain and the body are still communicating to each other. And so your brain might be saying, hey, I need some more, I'm used up all the ketones I have here. I need to need some more sugar. Let me go figure out where I've stored it in my body and let me release it. It will usually release it from the liver and usually it'll be somewhere around three in the morning. And so those, some of you will wake up at this time because your liver is like, boom, gives you some, a release of sugar. Um, and when you wake up in the morning, you're, you'll look at your blood sugar and you'll be like, oh my God, why is my blood sugar so high? I've been doing everything right. Well, yeah, your body's doing what it needs to do. You're still in a healing mode. So it just is that your liver dumped out some sugar at night. Best thing to do if you wake up and you do not like those, that blood sugar reading, is check it in a half hour later. Check in an hour later and just see if it normalizes. Because it might be that they call it the dawn effect for a reason, is that maybe when you woke up that morning, you just got a massive dump a couple of hours before you woke up. So don't be totally, uh, don't get your, totally bummed out if you're, if you're waking up with high numbers and it doesn't make sense, especially in the blood sugar department. Okay, the other thing that I see a lot of you guys ask is, it doesn't make sense. Why are my ketones so low in the morning? I've been fasting for three days. I went to bed and it was at 5.0 and I got up and my ketones were at 2.0. It's because your brain needed those ketones. It used it at night to heal the brain. So it's a beautiful thing. Your body's so smart, your brain's so smart. So don't forget that while you're sleeping, miracles are happening. And so your body's gonna figure out, does it need to store dump sugar? Does it need to use ketones? This is what's going on during the night. So your morning numbers are gonna look a little different. There's really nothing to do other than to honor that. And remember that your blood reader, when you look at that, it's just showing what is accessible in the blood at that moment your brain may be using those ketones. So if you're not excited about the ketone numbers when you look at them, just honor the fact that your brain might be using them right now so that it can function really clearly. Okay, after exercise. So same rules apply. I find, I've, I've tested uh, hundreds of times, I've watched my, some of my patients test, I've watched people in the academy test, it's pretty classic that after you exercise, if you take a reading after you exercise, your sugar is gonna be higher because your body has released it from the muscles. So it's re been releasing sugar from the muscles because you're working out and your ketones are gonna be lower because your body just used them. So I actually think act after, like right after exercise, half hour, hour after exercise is the worst time to take a reading. But what do you do if you woke up, you took a reading, you're like me, you work out in the morning, and then you're like, well, I gotta, I'm about to eat, I wanna test again. You can still test, just know that those numbers might be a little mixed up because you just uh, worked out. Okay, and then what about stress? I cannot say this enough, that when you're stressed, your, your, when your cortisol goes up, it's gonna spike your sugar, it's gonna spike insulin, it throws your, everything off that you're trying to accomplish with keto and fasting. So don't, you know, I always tell the story that when I wore the continuous monitor that a friend of mine gave me, the Dexcom, I was shocked how I was literally sitting at my kitchen table, like pulling, like getting ready to eat a meal. And I had been fasting for about 16 hours. I looked down at my Dexcom. I liked what it said. My teenage daughter walked into the room. We got in a fight or had something irritated us and I was, got all stressed about it. She walked out of the room. I looked at my Dexcom and it had gone up 30 points in one second of stress. So if you're not enjoying your numbers, you're doing everything, you might have to dive in and start to manage some stress. And stay tuned, I'm gonna do a whole series on stress. So if you're looking for more tools, mental tools, let me know in the comments. Just say, I need more mental tools, I need more stress tools, because I'm about to take you on an incredible journey on how you can manage stress. So get ready, that's coming, that's a playlist we'll be doing here in the next week. So, okay, so four patterns, 
there's two times I want you to measure your, your ketones. You've got four patterns that to look at, and then those four extra things at the end. Okay, so I think, like I literally was like, I think, I, how do I dump everything I know about ketones and blood sugar into one video? I hope that answered any question. If for some reason I didn't get to your question, put it in the notes. As always, if that's helpful, let us know. And I absolutely know that my team's gonna come in with all of these, one of these different scenarios and they're gonna make great infographs of them. So go make sure you're watching us on the community page. Thank you for your comments on the community page. Watch us on Instagram, because we make sure that you're getting, uh, we're making sure you get a lot of visual content over on Instagram. Um, and I always love to know if this is helpful, if it clears stuff up, let me know. And just, again, don't give up on yourself. You're too powerful. You, once you understand what you, the, the heck your body's doing, you can master health, you can master how you wanna feel in it. So as always, I hope that helps.